you like free stuff. I mean, let's be real. You love free stuff. And today, today, I'm gonna give you free stuff. So today I'm gonna go over an easy way to make your cups of coffee even better. And it won't cost you a single cent. Maybe a couple cents of your time, but it's worth it, trust me. So what we're gonna talk about is how to sort your dose. I know this sounds lame, but don't click away, listen to me. Sorting your dose is massively important. There are defects that make it through even with the nicest roasters because, well, not every roaster can catch every defect. Not every producer and their team can catch every defect. There are going to be defective beans in your cup. And so we're gonna focus on one massive one called Quakers. We're gonna look at roast defects like scorching, tipping, and some hollowed beans. And we're gonna take a look at removing chaff. So buckle up, we're gonna make this as quick as possible. But all of these things you can do at home for free. Just take a couple extra minutes before you brew your coffee. So let's get into it. All right, so first of all, what I have here is a naturally processed Ethiopia coffees. Ethiopia coffees tend to have a lot of what are called Quakers. Now Quakers are essentially underdeveloped seeds that will not react the way they should when being roasted, to put it very simply. So a lot of times these beans can have flavors of oats or um, some sort of like bread that gets into your final cup and it can really throw off the cup. Even one Quaker can throw off your entire cup of coffee and they're very easy to spot. So I pulled out this and we're gonna take a look and I'm gonna show you where some Quakers are that we can sort out. So as you see, we're looking here and immediately we're gonna look for the lightest coffees on the table. So my eye immediately points to this one right here. So we're gonna pull that out, boom. Up, oh, I see another one right here. So we're looking essentially for the lightest coffees on this table. Coffees that look blonde, they are not brown sufficiently. Ones that were not as effective or as affected during the roasting process. So you just kind of tap around. And sometimes you might be tricked. This one looks like it's really light. You see that? It looks really light, but really, that's just some of the parchment, the, some of the silver skin that's still on it. You can pull that off, there it is. So that was not a Quaker. But all you gotta do is tap around your dose. This is obviously not my dose, this is massive, but you're just gonna pull out those Quakers, and that is going to save you a lot of wasted cups. All right, so we've removed a sufficient amount of Quakers, we're gonna push those out of the way. After you pull out the Quakers, you're gonna to wanna to look for beans that are abnormal looking. So ones that might be hollowed out or might be partial beans or have the scorching or the tipping marks. So we're gonna take a look there. So here's one that's sort of hollowed out. As you see, it's got a massive crack down the center. So you wanna look for ones that have, that are massive, a massive crater kind of in the middle, a big crack, an opening crack. This just means that the seed itself was not like all the other seeds and so it roasted a lot differently than everything else. On top of that, you're gonna look for those like darker ones, as I said earlier, something like this, which is just discolored and much darker than everything else because that's gonna give kind of a charred taste to your cup of coffee. So while you're searching, you might also see some odd looking ones that are really rounded and small, something like this. So a pea berry is inside the cherry, you have just one seed as opposed to two that are facing each other. And these actually tend to be a lot sweeter. They have a bit uh, uh, more sweetness that come with them, at least anecdotally. Uh, the perceived sweetness tends to be higher. So I would never remove anything like that. But weird ones that look like this, or like this, things like that, remove all the time. Something like this, this I don't even know if it's a, coffee seed, and it definitely is, but I don't know what the heck it is. Who knows what that tastes like, and I don't wanna find out. So we're gonna take that, we're just gonna, it's gone. I'm not brewing with that. So, uh, after we go through all of that, you should have pre pretty decently sorted coffee. I would not take a long time to do this. In fact, normally what I'll do is I'll dose it into my dosing cup. All right, so there's my dose, and I'll just sit here and shake. Oh, I found another Quaker in that little sample. I'll just shake under a light. Maybe I'll put it in my hand. I just kind of, you know, push up. There's one more Quaker. I'll just take a look around. Eh, if it looks good, we're good. Anything that's obvious, I take out. I won't sit and painstakingly hand sort it until there's absolutely nothing but perfect coffees because that can be wasteful. And some of it don't, doesn't, some of those beans that we're taking out won't really affect the flavor profile that much. But Quakers definitely will. Scorching and tipping and dark colored beans in it definitely will. And then you also have the different, uh, just deformed beans, and those are going to cause a difference of taste. Oh, what is this? I uh, That's embarrassing. Um, it's a, well, actually I did it. 
I, it was me. I did. Because I love you. And just to give you a better understanding, look at these Quakers. I'm going to put them all on top and you're going to really see the difference in color. Look at that. Look at that. Ew. We don't want that. We don't want those. So we just pick them and we keep going. Ethiopias are notorious for having loads of Quakers. So if you have an, a, an Ethiopia at home, I would really, really suggest looking for Quakers. There are Quakers, you know, that always happen. They slip through even with the greatest roasters, even places that have like Savda color sorters, you're still gonna get some Quakers through. It's impossible to get them all out. So you'll find Quakers in your bag. That is common with wh whatever roaster you use in the world. So keep your eye out, pull the Quakers out, pull some of the scorches out, some of the tips, some of the hollows, some of the whatever funky looking beans you have. It's gonna improve your cup quality. Again, don't be anal about it. Don't sit there and look for forever. But if you have obvious things, pull them out. It's gonna really help your cups. The next thing, is another big thing. The next thing we're gonna talk about is removing the chaff. And I have a little taste experiment we're gonna do on camera. So let me get that set up and we'll be back. For me, it's gonna be like 10, 15 minutes, but for you, it's gonna be right now. All right, so I've got water back here boiling. I've set up four cups for a cupping. Two of them, I am going to remove the chaff and two of them, I'm gonna keep the chaff intact. And we're gonna set this full cupping. Then what I'll do is I am going to take three of them and set up a triangulation. And we'll have Hugo come on screen, my cameraman, and he's gonna taste them and see if he can tell a difference. Uh, because, well, I've had feedback from some of you all that it's not, as helpful whenever I'm cupping to show the difference. Uh, so we're gonna get someone else to do it. So I'm gonna get all this set up and we'll break the crust next thing you see. All right, so I've poured the water in all four of the cups. On these two, I double ground all four, but on these two, I blew out the chaff, and we have quite a bit of chaff that came out. These, I did not take the chaff out of. So I'm letting them sit before I break the crust, and then I'm going to scrape them, clean them, and then once time is ready, I will take three of the four. The reason I did four is because I wanna make sure who doesn't know which is which, which one I took two of and which one I took one of. If I would've done two of one and one of the other, he would know there's two with chaff or two without chaff, etc. All right, so we have the cupping ready. I'm gonna call Hugu to come on, and I'm gonna switch him up while his back is turned, and uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get his tasting. Then I'll do a tasting uh, as well. But uh, all right, so turn around. This is Hugo, by the way. But okay. turn around. You can't talk to my people. Okay, sorry. What's he doing? All right, so so you remember, this is with chaff, without chaff. I'm removing one that I can't tell this guy about. Okay. So, so the people at home know. All right, you ready? Yes, I am was born ready. That's right, that's the <clears throat> attitude. I love it. <laughs> so for the people at home, what he's looking for is which one has a papery taste or which ones have a papery taste which one or ones are sweeter, cleaner, maybe. Um, and yeah, going kind of based off of that. So whenever you're doing triangulations, you're always looking for a specific thing. In this case, obviously, the theory is that chaff or silver skin introduces a dry, bitter, papery taste. And so if he's able to see that, well, there we go. Well, I would guess that this is a different different one. Yes, that's right. Mm, nice, nice. Look at this, people. So we mm. tasted the difference. This is the one. Well, let's see. So you you're able to tell it was different. 
Yes. How was it different? Was it papery or not papery? Um, I was not looking specifically. Okay. What were you looking for? Sweetness. Okay. And these these two are way more sweet than than this one. Well, there you go. These two are sweeter than this one. This one had the chaff, so it it follows with the theory. All right. So Hugo was able to tell which is which. Now, <laughs> behind the scenes, what happened was. I had him come and mix all four up for me, and I forgot what the order was. So when I cupped and asked him to reveal, I was wrong. But then we went and looked at the footage, and I was actually right. Uh, so anyway, there is a big difference. I was able to tell. <laughs> and now the cups are cold, and it is what it is. Anyway, now that we've done the cupping, and we've shown that uh, it's pretty obvious to tell the difference because it's papery, it's less sweet, it's it, the, the, the chaff really kind of overwhelms a lot of it. What I would suggest you all do at home is... Take some of the chaff that you removed, some of the silver skin, put it into a cupping bowl, just like so. All right, we're gonna take this cupping bowl and we're just gonna cup the chaff. And this way you can see what the chaff on its own tastes like and what is it imparting to your cup. So if you want to reproduce the cupping I just did, you know what you're looking for in order to understand if it's something that is undesirable enough for you to remove or if it's not that big of a deal for you. So I'm gonna wet this up and we're gonna taste it and I'm gonna describe what I taste and then we're gonna kind of wrap up, all right? All right, so I've got the water all heated up and extracting the chaff, extraffing. And I'm just going to scrape it off so I can actually taste it. Oh, yeah, look at all that. Yum. Who wants a little bit of chaff for dinner? I do, I do. See, this is something you can do at home. I don't know why you would, but if you're curious what this tastes like, you can do it at home. So I'm just going to take a little bit into my spoon. Just kind of like a broth of chaff. Just get a little. It's really good. It's very, very papery. It's like liquefied paper. It's almost like the worst characteristics of cascara, which would make sense. Um, it has like a tobacco-y kind of thing going on. It's got a little bit of, um, there's a little bit of a. Yeah, it's kind of it's got like a tobacco thing going on. Um, yeah, it's just it's not great. It's dry, papery, tobacco, um, some sort of like really like fishy green tea. Um, that's not ideal in a coffee. Something that's like steamed to stop the oxidation. You know, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so anyway. This whole video was just to give you some free, uh, things that are free in order to improve your cup that don't include buying a new grinder, don't include tailoring your water, getting a new kettle, getting a new scale, getting new beans even. This is strictly taking what you have and just sorting it to improve the quality of your cup. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Give it a try. If you don't, if you don't notice any difference, let me know down below. If you notice a difference, let me know down below. If you take out some chaff and you cup it like I did here, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I'm sure that from coffee to coffee, the chaff is going to taste differently. So I'm curious. I'm curious your thoughts. Let's chat below. What are your thoughts on this? Is this something you could see yourself doing? Is this too much faffing about for you? Um, but yeah, actually, and before I finish, actually, let me show you the way that I remove my chaff. I don't double grind every day. That's way too much work. The way I remove my chaff is very simple. I just grind into a dosing cup and I blow it away. And so it's not as effective as double grinding because when you double grind, you get the full silver skin to come out. But when you grind to your desired size, you still have enough of the silver skin that, and it's easy to, it's easy to separate or it easily separates and you just blow it away. So you can do it with a single grind as well. With espresso, I don't think it's nearly as important to remove the chaff because you have such a higher concentration of a beverage. I don't think it would be possible to tell the difference. But when you're brewing filter coffee, the strength is so low, you definitely can tell the difference as demonstrated today with my cameraman, Ugu. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a moment, click that uh, subscribe button, hit the Patreon, check out what I'm doing there. Uh, join if you would like. We have a Discord that's popping off and it's really fun. Uh, leave a comment below, like button, all that stuff. You know what it is. Uh, it all helps me grow. It helps me uh, have videos like this that can help you improve your daily cup of coffee at home. Until then, I hope you brew something tasty. And cheers.